That ain't your understanding, that's God's understanding. We come together in fellowship. I let him have control. He wants to show us himself, which is inside of us. And it made me just feel like... Here, I want to ask you this. Everybody pay attention. Pay attention. By the way, that's scripture. Pay attention, my child. That's what the Bible says. How many had a good week? Okay. Now, what I'm talking about is this is the end of the week. And did you, did you fight a good fight? Did you play a good game? I mean, through it all, you know, when you're living life, you're going to have your ups and downs. True? Well, that's God's plan. If you think you get past that, then you're back to your own understanding again. Now, just so think about this. We, we struggle and battle. Someday, I mean, there's telling you, sometimes you feel like you're going insane. It's crazy. What's the use? Nothing's right. The ball, the, the things falling out of whatever and messing us all up. True? True. And all of a sudden, here comes that sweet peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're, if you're athletic, you know you, put, you know you gear up, play. All of a sudden, you start playing and realize those guys are a little tougher than we thought. Yeah. Now we thought we were just going to go in there and just kind of go through the motions, you know, and take over. But all of a sudden, you get in there and you find that man there you are tough. Now what'd you do? Did you call down and say, "Well, they're tougher than we are," or did you say, "Well, wait a minute now, come on." Let's go fight this good fight. <laughs> hey man, you fought, you fought, you scraped, and you kicked, bone grow, right, complained, and trash talk. No, you trash talk. <laughs> but when it's all said and done, when the whole of the game is over, man, you come off all beat up, but you won. Yeah. Amen. Now listen to what I'm saying. You started last Monday morning. And what was it like all the way up until tonight? That was the week. I mean, did you win? Did you lose? I mean, did you feel like, man, you've been scrapping all week, all day, battle after battle, and all of a sudden, come on, all of a sudden, it's over. Can you celebrate and say, you know what? Through it all, through it all, man, I'm still standing. Wash my face. Wipe away the tears, the blood. <laughs> Hobble over to the, get a cane or something. <laughs> get ready for the next week. Now here's what I'm saying. I remember, I was just thinking about this a minute ago. Sin. The ways of sin is death. I must have been, what, 17? No, about 18, 19, whatever. Working, you know, worked all day, all week, drank every night almost. And come Friday, man, it's Friday, let's go. And you're the business on. Oh, you're going for it. I mean, I'm talking about it. It comes Sunday. <laughs> and you're thinking, you're sitting in the bar. I got till 2 o'clock. <laughs> then all of a sudden, they turn on the lights at 2 o'clock in the morning. Who said that? Come here. No, come here. Come here. Wake her up, tell her, come here. Even though she's bowing down. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Boom. I like you've been there, done that. Yeah. Hey, hey. Well, what kind of feeling is that? Uh, you're bummed because you want to drink more. And you can. It's over. Yeah. And you say, man, what am I going to do now? I ain't got no hope. I mean, what, what? Now, if you're like me, I love pride, so I'm going to get up and go to work. Right. I'm going to cop out. I did this to me. And I'm thinking, ah! That's not God. Ah! <laughs> yes. Yes. Give me one of those. Come here, come here. Give me one of those feel one of those feelings when you realize you finally come to the realization you gotta quit and you gotta go home, go to bed so you can get up and go up get up in the morning and what do you, how do you feel like? Give us what something. Uh, I would get high off coke and then just stay up all night and then go to work. So. You would go to work? Yeah. Well I own my own business, so that too. Monkey business? No, well uh, landscaping. Well <laughs> oh, you're grinning now. No, but just think about this. Hey, hey. We put our 
yourself in that position. True. Well, you got to pay the consequences. You have sheep, God's got monsters, so you're going to weep. Grief. And we get choice. I think about that now, going through that, and I hate it. Oh, I said, God, no, 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 no. Thank you, Jesus. You got me out of that mess. And I, this week has been battles, struggles, like you cannot believe that men would we come up on top, don't we? Victorious. Man, we have people going to different places. Come back with victory. You heard all the victories and everything else. And we're here tonight. Don't want to hug nobody. Just want to sit down. All of a sudden, you get up and hug somebody. You feel a little better. Oh, no, I just want to see where you catch this real good. This is the way God works. Every moment of every day is a God thing. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to choose? And me, I want to choose to serve Him. Fight. We can't lose. You can fight as hard as you want. You can wipe away the tears. You can scream, God, why is it so hard? I don't understand this. I'm going to make sis. Where are you? <laughs> Next thing you know, I got the, I got the joy lures my strength. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Well, this is to me a celebration, especially on Sunday nights. We get to celebrate this whole week. If you had a bad week, forget the past. That's what Paul Paul says. Forget those things that's behind and just glory in the, the presence of the Lord here. I praise and worship was something else, wasn't it? Just glory in that. I said, well, you know, I'm going to do better next week. Because, you know what? I was reading a book about mulligans. It's a golf book. It was really neat. Scriptural. But it was about mulligans. It was a golf book. You know what a mulligan is? Oh, yeah. That's right. You screw up, you get another chance. Well, some of us can't take mulligans. Truly, playing, have you ever played the game of golf? I can't take a mulligan. I got your ball's in the water. No. It's in the water, but you can see it, so you got to hit it. And somebody says, hey, why don't you just take a mulligan? I can't do that. This whole life, God wants to give us mulligans. Think about that. I just think about that. Thank you, Jesus. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm going to take a few more mulligans. In other words, I'm going to submit and say, if somebody's going to give me a mulligan, which Jesus is going to give you a new chance, new hope, new... Come on! Amen. New week, whatever. And by the way... Our grace, mercy, is new every day. Now my wife's looking at her watch, so I better shut up. <laughs> but I find it. Jump a bill. Would you come here and take the offering? Are you playing? No. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, God. Oh, man. I just pray right now, Father in heaven, for everyone here. God, just put on the heart exactly how much you want them to give. We know you say, give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over God. And the needs are great. And the answer to you, these great needs is in this house. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> and whatever they give, multiply it a hundredfold so they can see that you are the master of everything. Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 I don't know how to feel yet. Somebody said, Wait, how we said not hurry through. Amen. You know, it's so, to me, listen to this. God's got to be God. you got to let God be God. You can do whatever you want, manipulate around, try to weasel your will. But God's going to be God. You let Him be God. There's times that He puts us in a, a struggle position. Amen? Well, our preacher tonight has been in a struggle position for a long time. He pastored the church for many, many years. Successful so far. All of a sudden, God shut it down. For he can let him talk about it. But you know, he been, I've, he's preached some of the best sermons he's ever preached since God shut that church down. So evidently he was working in him. Now you can say, praise the Lord or ouch. Well, he's in good shape. Now he got a brand new church. He's, he's starting to work in. He's going to preach on Sunday. And he's taking over. And he's been preaching for us on the first. The first Saturday night and Sunday night, we were switched off for years. So he's going to be preaching here tonight. And you know what's so neat? His father-in-law 
Ron Henry is the one that trained him. In fact, he trained a lot of us. He's been, he passed away a few years ago, but he's still alive in us. And so it's just so neat, just to let God be God. Come on, you can go do your own thing if you want. You can sit down and sit around and observe it. You can stand up and take it as it comes, because God's got all things working out of it. Pastor Gene. Thank you, Pastor Walt. And there are seasons in life, right? Some seasons are those seasons where God does prune you, cut you back, so that you can grow more, right? And a lot of you are in some of those seasons this evening. You know, where you're like, I don't understand. The Bible says if you keep your mind focused on Him, He'll give you perfect peace. Perfect peace. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. It's a good looking group here tonight, Pastor Wall. You know, most churches, Labor Day weekend, everybody's gone. But this one, everybody's here. That's, that's awesome. I'd like you to do me a favor. Would you touch your head? And say, Lord, open my mind. Lord, open my mind. Now put it on your heart and say, Lord, open my heart. Lord, open my heart. Not to just hear your word. Not to just hear your word. But to do it. When I leave here tonight, you just made a promise to God. You just prayed that God would help you, and you got to do it now when you leave here today. Isn't that awesome? Hey, look around you for just a moment. Just, just look around you. Everybody just look around you. What do you see? What do you see? You know what I see? I see potential. Potential. Potential is one of the one of the most wonderful words, actually, in any language. It looks forward with optimism. It implies fulfillment. It hints at greatness. Potential is a word based on possibilities. Think about your potential as a human being tonight. And if you really think about it, you get excited, or, or at least I hope you do, about your potential. The real you, not the one that you just left behind, but the real you and what God has designed. See, I believe in your potential just as much as I believe in my potential. You might say, well, do I even have potential? Yes. Yes, you do. Well, you don't know my life story. I've really messed up. I've really goofed up. It's not too late. You're here for a reason. And that is to discover and to fulfill your potential in God. Now, what about unfulfilled potential? Think about that for a moment. That phrase is as negative as the word potential is positive. It really is unfulfilled potential. How many people do you know that you saw them go to the grave with unfulfilled potential? You say, man, that person, he had it all. They had it all. They were so, had such potential, such promise. Florence Laddier wrote a book called Silver Boxes. It was about her father who always wanted to be a singer, a singer, but never was. She said, he died with music still inside him. That is a great description of unfulfilled potential. Not reaching your potential is like dying with music still inside of you. Still there. So do you want to reach your potential tonight? Do you want to grow? Do you want to be everything that's inside here that God has made you to be? Where do we start? What do we do? God has brought you to this wonderful church on the street, this dream center. He's brought you here, and that's what you want to accomplish. You're on your feet. Get on your feet. But what are you going to do when you get on your feet? Go after your potential, right? Where do we start? Motivator, motivational speaker and author John Maxwell. Everybody knows. In his book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, he said, 
If we desire to grow as a person, it is imperative that we help others. Amen. Get that? See, sin, pain, causes our focus to go inward. It closes us down. We don't look at everybody else. We don't, we're not sensitive to anyone else. We're just focused more on us. I love Church on the Street because it makes you, they make you look at others. You know, you, you, you're out on the streets every morning. You're out all the time. And that's because they're trying to get your focus off of you and on others. Because that's how we grow. Amen. Then John Maxwell poses this. He says, how do you increase your chances of being able to help others and make significant contribution in your lifetime? Then I like what he says. This is really the title of what I want to say or share with you tonight. Think of yourself as a river instead of a reservoir. See, most people who make personal growth a part of their lives do it to add value to themselves only. I want to grow. I want to add value to my life only. They are like reservoirs. They continually to take, take, take. They, they continue to fill up, fill up, fill up, and do nothing with it. And you know, reservoirs can become pretty nasty stagnant, buggy, okay? They really can. They can smell. Now, in contrast, a river flows. Whatever water it receives, it sends out. It gives away, constantly flowing, adding value to others constantly. That requires us to have an abundance mindset. A mindset, a belief that we will keep receiving as we keep giving. Right? You know, we get this ideal that, that, that Jesus doesn't have everything. You know, we want to hold on to everything in our lives. We want to hold on. When he, he says, no, give it away. Live your lives, as my father-in-law used to say, with your hands open, your palms open. That's right. You receive, you give. That's flowing. That's a river. And the Bible says, Jesus says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over will be put in your lap. Amen. For with the measure, listen to this, with the measure that you use to give, it will be measured back to you. <laughs> That's a flowing river. So measure big. Give big. Have, be a rapid. <laughs> You're know, flowing quick. Give away. You know, in a, in a wounded world that needs Jesus, we must ask ourselves, am I a river or am I a reservoir? Am I holding on or am I giving out? In the Bible, there's a story that demonstrates what I'm, I mean when it talks about river, river flowing with hope, healing, and life. I love this story. I'm going to read it to you from Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. It's a, it's a fun story. It's a great story. I love this story. One day, Jesus was teaching, and the, Phil the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee, from Judea, Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went on top of the roof, lowered him on his mat, threw the tiles in the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friends, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law begin, to, begin thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? 
Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things to your, to, to, to your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and giving praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things. That's an awesome story. Here, we have a man who himself couldn't be helped. He couldn't help himself. And he had, he had surrendered to a paralyzed lifestyle. Now imagine the potential that was lost. He had no hope of ever ob obtaining his potential, his desires, his dreams. But notice what Jesus said. And when he saw their faith, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven you. That's important. Their faith was what got the man before Jesus. We all have people we pray for that God would heal them, that God would save them. And when we don't see it the way we think we, we should see it, our faith kind of gets dammed up. It gets dammed up. The river stops. Now this guy didn't get dis these guys didn't get discouraged and they and, and, and surrendered to the dam. They broke the dam. They broke through the dam. It's hard to dam up a river that is running and flowing. It somehow finds a way to break through. The water always seems to get through. And that pretty much sums up what it means to be a river in life. It's persistent until it breaks through. We give up far too easy on people who need to get to Jesus. We give up far too easy when we need to get to Jesus. You know, the people we may, we may know people that their faith is paralyzed. You know, they're not paralyzed physically, but spiritually they are. And maybe you're there tonight. Maybe you want to get to Jesus, but something is stopping you. Let the river take you there. Because look around you, we see some flowing rivers here. Right? So how do we break the dam? And how do we keep the river flowing? How do we begin to grow? By getting away. Well, there's several thoughts I want to give you tonight. Number one, we need to live intentionally. <coughs> Stay with me here. We need to live every day of our life with intentions. Stop just surviving. Stop just getting by. You have purpose with Jesus. And every day you get up, it's not a day where well, I gotta get through this day again. I gotta, I gotta just get through this day. Then the morrow comes, I gotta get through that day. It doesn't change. Every day is the same, and it's gonna stay the same until you change and say, Today I am going to live my life with good intentions. I've got purpose. Look at what happens. Some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. Now, I want you to get this picture because it's a great picture. Their intentions were good. They go to get this man's house, their friend. They get him. They carry him, I don't know how far, to this one house where they knew Jesus was going to be. Right? right. They get to the house and it is packed full of people. Kind of like this tonight, only more so. They couldn't even get through the front door. It was packed. Their intentions were to get this man before Jesus. He was broken, and Jesus was his last chance. Now, it had to be difficult to lift this man up. Think about it for a few minutes. They're outside the house, 
They step back, they probably look around, and, you know, oh, he could get up right there. Now, I don't know whether they use a ladder, ropes, probably at all, but they somehow got on the roof and brought this man, dead weight, to the top of the house and then let him down right in front of Jesus. Now, think about it. It looked crazy. It was a mess. Most of us, we would have got to the house with this man, and if we're not living with intentions in our life, we would look and say, man, we got here too late. Look at that crowd. Let's just go home. Sorry, dude. We wanted to get you to Jesus, but we've got to take you back home. But no, their intentions were, we know that Jesus is his only hope. We're going to get him before Jesus one way or another. And it was a mess. Sweat was pouring out off of their faces, I'm sure. You know, they were getting all dirty, climbing on this house. They get on top of it. They rip open the, the house. Jesus is probably sitting on a stool teaching the people or something. And all of a sudden, things start to fall out right in front of them. Right? And then pretty soon, right in the middle of a crowd bigger than this, here this man comes being lowered down with ropes. Okay? Think about that for a few minutes. That was crazy. They tore that house up. I wondered who fixed the roof. <laughs> they tore it up to get this man to Jesus. Amen. Stay with me here. Their intentions for the good took precedence over how they felt, what people thought. Church, we need this today. We want to help people. We want to grow. Our intentions have to be that strong. I'm going to tear the roof up to get you before Jesus. I won't give up on you. I won't quit. How many people do you know that are paralyzed? Maybe not physically, but spiritually. A river flows. It's always moving. It's refreshing in how it sounds, how it cleanses. And, and waters. But a river also is pretty fierce at times. I was raised in a foreign country called Arkansas. <laughs> That's where I was born and raised. <laughs> I live pretty close, I live pretty close to the Arkansas River. That river is treacherous, very dangerous. People drown in it all the time. But as teenagers, man, we had some pretty awesome rope swings. And we, we enjoyed that water when it wasn't so muddy. We enjoyed that water and, and swinging out and dropping into that water more than anything, jumping off cliffs into the water more than anything. We didn't worry about how, how dangerous it was. Brother, I just got to tell you something about Arkansas. You know that uh, it's mentioned in the Bible. Yeah, Noah looked out the Arkansas. I know all of those. I know all of those. Yeah, yeah. I, I got all of those ones down, my friend. <laughs> but anyway, rivers can be fierce. They can be dangerous. We need that in our lives today. You know, to flow is to live our lives with intentions to live out what we believe and never surrender to the damn. Our day should be lived with intentions that are to get people before Jesus. Be there, Jesus. The Bible says that as we do, not only will we have impact, but we change and grow as a person. I get that. We have these intentions that are strong. That we're going to not give up on somebody. We're not going to give up on ourselves. And we're going to fight through this. We're not going to walk away. We're going to fight no matter how hard it is, how difficult it is. We're going to get to Jesus. And as we do, we start to grow ourselves. As we bring somebody else with us. Leaving no choice, we grow ourselves. You know, we got this idea that Jesus was this, was this weak guy. I want to tell you something. Jesus 
was in shape. He was strong. You know why I know this? He was a carpenter. Okay? And they didn't just work with wood. They worked with big stones. Okay? And I want to tell you, Jesus went into the temple one time, and they were all having money changers, selling things, messing up the temple. And what did he do? He took out a whip, and he started whipping, whipping it and saying, Get out of here! Turned over tables. He was fierce at times. He was angry at times when he needed to be. I read across the scripture out of the New Living Testament. It says, it's in, it's in Philemon 1.6. And I pray, I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith. As you understand and experience all good things we have in Christ. NIV says, as you as you begin to share your faith, as you begin to give out, you will grow spiritually. You'll have understanding of His Word. Look, tonight, you may be the one that's paralyzed by sin, by shame, by guilt, by habits. You may be that person. And it's always worth the mess, the fight to get to Jesus. It's always worth it. It's always worth the fight. So get to Him, no matter what the cost, no matter what you have to do. But get up every morning and say, my intentions are to give. My intentions are to lead. My intentions are to serve. My intentions are to get people before Jesus. Live your life intentionally. Secondly, second thought, beat the crowd. Beat the crowd. When they could not find a way to do this, verse 19 says, because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him down in the mat, the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Now, they had no excuses. Their passion to meet this need was stronger than the crowd, stronger than the distractions. Get that thought. We're all distracted. You can get up in the morning with good intentions, but as you pursue, all of a sudden, you're distracted by this person or that thing. Right. Now listen to this. Most of these people, the Bible says, most of these people who were crowding in, in that room and were blocking the path for the needy were those who were criticizing Jesus, judging Jesus, putting him on the on trial. These guys found a way to beat the crowd and bring salvation and healing to their friend. How many doubters, complainers, accusers, and theologically twisted people crowd Jesus out? I want to tell you, it's in the church even. We're too busy criticizing and judging, or we're too busy twisting the word of God. Get out of that seat and let somebody else come in. You understand what I mean? Someone that needs Jesus and wants him. Don't be like one of these people who were crowding out the need. The needs that were there. How many times do we let people discourage us? from fighting for others' salvation and freedom. We're distracted. You ever have somebody put somebody on your heart to maybe go see, go minister to, go try to get to, 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 to lead them to Jesus, but somebody else comes along and says, ah, they'll never, they'll never do that. Yeah. Forget them. Oh, okay. And you give up on them that easy? Look, if God lays it on your heart, do it. And do it with a focus. Do it determined. Beat the crowd. Don't listen to the naysayers. A river flows uncontrollably at times. It makes a path wherever it goes. It cannot be stopped. It can be dangerous at times. And I want to tell you, I believe with all of my heart that it's time the church gets a little dangerous, don't you? This is an urgency.
see here. Amen. If you look around in our community, our city, our nation, the world that we live in, this is urgent, people. Amen. Stop thinking about yourself and what you want and start looking out. Go after it. So tired of selfish faith. I'm so tired of people that they just want it for themselves. Right? And it's time to go after it. You know, there's a lot of hurt in this world. There's a lot of craziness in this world. We gotta beat the crowd. You gotta stop being discouraged. You gotta stop being being held back, even in your own spiritual growth. You gotta stop being discouraged. If Satan can discourage you, he'll just keep doing it. Resist that. And he'll flee from you. You gotta have this determined focus in you. You gotta have this, this fight about you. Why? Because you see the needs all around. Get your eyes off yourself. Put it on what's out there, what God wants you to do. Start giving, start doing, and you will grow. You will change. God will use you in a powerful way. The Bible says, and you guys know the scripture, no weapon. No weapon. Let me say it again. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And I love this one. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Amen. This is a promise from God. But see, we want all these promises to ourselves. We want all these promises without doing anything. We want all these promises. We want God to just come and give it all to us. No, He says, no. I want you to learn to give. I want you to learn to live intentionally. I want you to go. And I don't want you to be weak and wimpy and stop. Sin will always call to you. Sin will always cry out to you. I, I had a church in the inner city back in Illinois, the Chicago area. And my father-in-law sponsored me, so we started this inner city church. And we fed 150 homeless people breakfast every morning. And it was cold there. Sub-zero degree weather. They were living in cardboard boxes. But I had one, one man, one man uh, sitting down with me one time. He says he was addicted to cocaine. Terribly bad. And he was in church just crying one day. He says, I can't help it. It calls to me. It calls my name. Some of you might understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> Sin will always call your name. Sin will always call you back to where you were before. Right. You've got to beat the crowd. Right. You've got to stand in the name of Jesus. No weapon forged Amen. against me is going to turn me away from my God. You've got to do that. You've got to do it. Sometimes we depend on other people to do it for us. It's not going to happen. You gotta make the decision. You can have all the buddies around you, all the accountability partners you want around you, but if you if sin is calling you and if you don't say no, you're going to follow it. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So if you follow it, it's just your choice. Because the Spirit of God is stronger. Some of you today have been praying and praying for God to move in your life, for God to move in your situation. When He is saying, I'll move through you. Let me move through you. Who is crowding you out from salvation, freedom, and healing? Get a dangerous faith. Some of you may have relatives, you may have children, you have friends that you know need Jesus and you hurt for them but you think I, there's nothing I can do about it you are dead wrong first of all you begin to pray like you've never prayed before for those people God will open doors that no man can open 
you will be able to have that opportunity to go get them and do it aggressively. Not whippish. I want to tell people about my faith, but I'm a little bit shy. Baloney on that. I used to be shy. I used to never talk. I used to be the kid that sat in the back of the church, came late, left early. Wouldn't talk to anybody. Scared of the platform. In fact, I, I, I couldn't even read. I had problems. But when I surrendered everything to God, that means surrender everything to God. Amen. And now I can't stop talking. Okay? And I love what I do. I can't stop reading. I love what I read. God will change you. He will change you. He wants to grow you, develop you. But you've got to surrender everything to Him. We need to get dangerously aggressive Amen. in bringing people before Jesus. Amen. Live intentional. Beat the crowd. Get people before Jesus. And then the last one is this. Put Jesus on the spot. Put Him on the spot. <laughs> Jesus in verse 20 says, When He saw their faith, He said to the man, Your sins are forgiven. And then the Pharisees and the teachers of the law stood up and began to say, Who are you? All these critics, all these negative people, all these people that one day would put him on the cross stood up and came against him. He looked at him and said, Okay, I'm going to heal him right in your face. And he did. He did. He shut him down. This action action happened right in front of Jesus. Right, boom, the guy comes down right in front of him. The guy can't walk. And these guys are criticizing him. All of the people that were against him. And, and he was on the spot. But the Bible says the Spirit of God was on him to heal people. So he says, rise, pick up your mat, go. Amen, amen, amen. Right in front of them. I love how he, just right in their face. Yes. My point is, is Jesus likes for us to put him on the spot. Amen, amen, amen. He'll come through. But not only was a life at stake here, but faith was put on the spot right. by these guys that brought him there. All eyes are watching Jesus. Listen, we break the dam that hinders the supernatural when we put God on the spot in our faith. Amen. You may be in a situation today where it's like, I don't know what to do. Amen, amen, amen. I don't know what to do. You start taking actions. And people will say, well, you know, there's no use you doing all that stuff. Put God on the spot. Back it up with prayer. And watch God move. Amen. Watch God change your situation. Their faith brought salvation. Jesus, however, took it further. He always does. All the time. <laughs> he says, your sins are forgiven you. And he says, I want to take it even a step further in the face of all these that are watching. Get up and walk. You have no clue what God wants to do in your life. Amen. None. You may think you do. Yes, you may give your life to Christ, but He'll take it a step further. Amen. You may surrender everything to Him, but He'll take you further. Amen. And He'll do things that you never thought would be possible. So how do I know how to be aggressive here? How do I know when to put Jesus on the spot? How do I know what is God and what is me? Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the truth. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Amen. You have that in your life and in your heart. You're going to know. Amen. You're going to know. Stay connected. Amen. And watch God work in your life. Yes. And then, when you know God's Word, when you know God's Word, you know what's right you know what's truth? And all of a sudden, the Spirit just brings it out to you. There's a scripture that's my life verse. I've claimed it. Micah 
But he says this, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Was it justice that this man get before Jesus? Yes. Some today have allowed injustice in their life and are around them right now. You see things that are going on that you can confront, but you choose not to. You see Satan do things and say things to you and about you and your family and everything else and you just simply tolerate it. You don't have to do that. You rise in power. You know, and every time he says, you're a failure, you say, I'm a victor. Amen. You're a victim, I'm a victor. Amen. You don't listen to the lies of Satan. That's injustice. Follow what Jesus wants. Right. It's time to get up and walk. Put Jesus on the spot and your faith has, if, if your faith has been weakened, it's still alive. I, I, I want to give you this illustration. You guys all know the story of David and Goliath, right? Now, if anybody ever put God on the spot, it was David in that situation. But he was so full of God, so full of the Spirit, so full of the Word, he knew what was right. He knew that Philistine was hindering God's people. And when he walked up, they didn't take any time at all to say, what is this guy doing? And why are you over here? What's going on here? What is anybody going to do about this? And they were all afraid. But listen to David. You know the story. He put all the stuff on. He took it off. He says, no, I'm going to fight the way that I know how to fight. That's a lesson for all of us to do. You start where you are with what you have. How you know. That's what you got to do. So what does he do? He gets five stones and goes out. And he didn't just walk out to the giant. I love it. The Bible says that David said to the Philistine, you come at me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. David was good with the sling, no question about it. But I believe the Spirit of God directed that one stone right to the head. The Why? Because he put God on the spot. He said, I'm not going to put up with this anymore in my life. I'm not going to put up with this. This, this is a hindrance to God. Justice needs to be done. And he took matters in his own, own hand. He says, I'm going to go at him in the, in the name of the Lord. Amen. But listen, don't try to do that without knowing God's word. Without the Holy Spirit guiding them. That's the problem we have. We want all of these, all of this power without spending time with God. We want to get saved and go out here and conquer the world. You gotta be, you gotta be trained. You gotta know the word of God. You gotta get his word in your heart. You gotta get filled with the Holy Spirit. You gotta get filled with the Holy Spirit. And I mean really filled. Because of what you've been through. You don't need just a little taste of Jesus. You need to be consumed with His Spirit. Right? All of us do. All of us do. So, not only was this man healed, but the dam broke throughout the community. Look at the end results. Verse 26. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things. <coughs> you know, I'm just crazy enough to think that God wants to do this every day. I'm just crazy enough to think that He has filled His people with such power that we can, every day, live our lives with such intentions 
we can every day have this kind of power to change and lead others to Him. I believe that. I believe that. Feed your potential in Christ. Don't die with music inside. So are you a river? Or are you a stagnant reservoir? <laughs> it's a call to action tonight. That's all it is. It's a call to action. It's a call to be tough. It's a call to be strong. It's a call to fight for what you believe in. That's right. Are you damned up? You've given up? You run into this wall and you're about to surrender? Stop right where you are. Don't give up. Are you not growing like you should and you want to? Then you need to surrender again and get to work giving. Get to work doing. That's what God wants. You may be here tonight and you may be the paralyzed one. I'm going to tell you what Jesus told this man. Arise, pick up your mat, and go. Get busy. You know enough. You know enough. So are you a river or are you a reservoir? I know that you want to be a river. It doesn't just happen. It takes surrender. It takes surrender. You sang it earlier in a song, these guys sang. You've got to surrender everything. Do you know how dangerous that song is? You know how dangerous? My father in law used to tell me you better be, par- be careful what you pray for because you might get it. You've got to be careful how you surrender. Because God takes it serious. And He starts to work and change. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for these wonderful, wonderfully gifted people who have such potential that You have chosen, You have called, and You want to do mighty, mighty things in their lives. Touch them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Eugene could not preach like that unless he surrendered. You have no idea what he's been going through. But God's taken him through. And that's what he wants to do with us. And I'm going to tell you what. When you have the courage is just believing and step when the struggles are coming against you, you step out and you're all there all by yourself you can't do anything by yourself the power of God at that particular time is the only thing that's going to get you out of it that's when he's going to come through understand what I'm saying that's what Pastor Gene is talking about total surrender put yourself right out there and see what happens I trust you God I believe in you and you know, when you, you think the bottom's falling out, and so many of us quit at that time, not quit, but I guess God doesn't know about me. Yes, He does. He's got you right where He wants you, and He's going to show you what He can do. Just step out by faith. How many is willing to do that? Come on. Come up this altar and pray. Pastor Gene, come up and pray for him. Come on, everybody. The knees in. Don't think about it twice. Just say, you know what? I need this. Let me just step out. I don't want nothing to stop me. I hope you mean what you're saying tonight. I hope you mean it. Okay, because God takes it serious. And He wants to do an amazing work in your life. I want you to repeat this short prayer after me. Dear Lord, I stand before you. Needing change. Needing healing. Needing deliverance. I don't have understanding. But I want to trust you. Heal me tonight. I surrender all. Now let me pray for you. Father, these aren't just words. 
you're almighty. And Father, I can stand tonight, Lord, having been through so much over the past few years. I didn't fall into grave sin. I didn't do things that I shouldn't do. You just took me through a season. And Father, that's when I really began to hear you. That's when I began to really know you like never before. You don't look at our past. You look at where you want us to go. And Father, you love every person in this room tonight. As we sang it earlier, you love us with a fierce love. There's nothing easy, nothing simple, nothing sweet about the cross. That's how much you loved us. And Father, we stand here today re-surrendering, committing everything to you. Now I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. I pray that you would give every person at this altar this desire, this hunger, this thirst to know your word, to know you. And Lord, that you would fill them with the Holy Spirit that they're sensitive to know what to do. Make them mature. Help them to understand like never before. And Father, as they begin to move out tomorrow and make the decision as they get out of bed, I'm going to live this day with intentions to give. To give hope, to give love, to get people before Jesus. I'm going to be someone's Jesus today. Oh, we're not perfect, but Father, you know our hearts and you will lead them. And I pray for that in their lives today, that you would just direct every step of the way. I know, I know there's some people standing here today. Lord, they have done things. Their, their, their mountains in life are huge. Huge. But Lord, we just start where we are with what we have take us through it and we'll see great victory reaching our potential that you have given to each person touch each and every one tonight Lord may we not just walk out of here tonight saying oh it was a good service Lord I, I personally don't care anymore whether I'm a noted good speaker I could care less I just want to teach your word I pray that and the best compliment that I could get was people would walk out of here tonight saying, I know Jesus better. I know Jesus better. And Father, I pray for that tonight. Because none of us are anything without you, Lord. May you sweep across this place this evening. May you, by your precious spirit, strengthen, encourage, and give us a hunger and thirst for righteousness, a hunger and thirst for your word, and fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Just let God be God. He'll do the rest. God bless you. Shimanyana.